uh, probably you saw this place, uh, you see that atrocity really in civilian places. This is no military any facilities, no military object, just civilian. The same you can see in Bucha, in Irpin, in Dmitrivka, and today you can see in Kramatorsk. They're using the Tochka U on a, on a railway station with the people that died or wounded. And uh, they continue to do it. They are going to do it in the Donbass, they continue to do it in the south of Ukraine. And uh, it's very important to understand for your government, your people, that we need more weaponry, we need more modern weaponry, not old-fashioned Soviet weaponry. I mean NATO standard. And your country, your government, have it. You can do it. It's very easy. We need MLRS, it's a multi-launch rocket systems. We need tanks, armed vehicles, and we need artillery with a caliber 155, not 152 like in the former Soviet uh, epoch. And your country have it. And I ask you to discuss it with, in your society that we can take it and we will finish the job. It's a very important message to your country, to your people. Can you tell us um, why were Ukraine's armed services so successful in stopping and pushing back the Russian invading forces here? Uh, we're in the vicinity near Bucha. And what you need specifically, you, uh, for, for how quickly to, to succeed the same way in Donbass? I, I can repeat, we need more long range uh, weapon because we can deter them, but we need to kick them out. For that, we need MLRS to using them more than 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers, 5, 50 kilometers. We need anti ship missiles to stop them in Odessa, in the Black Sea. We need tanks, a lot of. We need armed vehicles and we need uh, artillery, also like 155 caliber, because it's more efficient and we will do it. And we have people, we have a brave people, all Ukrainians are very brave, you know it, but you can help us or they will come to your country. It's not uh, threatening, I'm not trying to threaten you, but it's absolutely in their minds. You can see their social pull about the Poland, about the Baltic countries. So we can stop them. As many, many years ago, Churchill uh, said, give us tools, we will finish the job. And, and are you getting this weaponry as fast as you need it? Or the, the US, the Pentagon announced overnight that they're going to be providing lots of more javelins and stingers and longer range missiles. Is it a question of timing? How stingers, javelin, it's very good equipment for deterring them. But uh, we can use it like anti-tank, anti-aircraft in a short distance, short distance. We need to use something for long distance, long range. That's the difference. That's why I say you about the changing the philosophy. This, it's strategical question. We need to start using the modern weaponry, not old fashioned Soviet epoch. That's, that's the difference. And you need weapons government? to go on the offensive, right? Yes. Here, this was a defensive position here. You yeah. need to go on the offensive. Absolutely. That's why you need tanks and you need longer range. Yes. Tanks, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The Norwegian government has already given anti-tank anti weapons to M72. Have you used yes, that? it's true. I really thank you for Norwegian government. But it's anti-tanks. It's for deterrent, for offensive. We need more. And you know that they're threatening us in Black Sea, in alongside the seashore near Odessa and we need anti-ship missiles. And have you used the Norwegian M72? Sorry? Do you know? Have you used them, the Norwegian M72? Uh, Ukraine is a country which is in the space. So we know how to use any kind of equipment. We know how to use NLAV, Stinger, Javelin. We will know how to use the anti-ship missiles. Now, it's a not rocket science. So we can use Abrams, we can use Leopard tanks, absolutely. Because our guys, eight years involved in uh, trainees courses in, with the NATO countries. So we know how to do it. And you see. 
would you know if the anti-tech weapons that the Norwegian government sent, have they been used yet? Yes, we used it. Hmm. Yes, but I, I, I ask you to, we need to go faster to get more, not only anti-tanks equipment, not only. And I know that your country has a MLRS, have artillery also, we can use it. But if the Norwegian government gives these weapons to Ukraine, aren't you worried that the war will escalate and that more countries will what be involved? What level of escalation you will want? What level? How many people should be died here? How many Ukrainian blood should be on, on this floor? How many? For, for next level of escalation. It's a real, they, Russia started Third World War. It started. Don't think that it will be my big, no, they started it against the civilized world. Atrocity, you can see it. It will be in your cities also, if you will not stop them right now. Not only sanctions, weaponry also. It's a difference. And how critical is the timing here? You need the timing is critical. Timing is critical every day. Every day, our people paying by our blood. It's very critical. How serious is the situation in Donbass? Are Ukrainian forces on the verge of being surrounded? That seems to be yes, a it's a plan of uh, Kremlin to circle our joint force operation uh, platoons in Donbass, and they will continue bombing and shelling Mariupol, and you know it. And if you get the long-range missiles and the long-range weaponry, that will help you how? You'll be able to push them back in Donbass? Uh, yes, yes, we will kick them out from the, our country. Uh, could you give us an update on the situation in Mariupol? Uh, is it still held by Ukrainian forces? You, you know it, yeah. They're still fighting and fighting and fighting and keep their very big, uh, more than 10,000 uh, Russian Army's soldiers are near the Mariupol. That they they stop them. It helped to to live in Mykolaiv, Kherson, Odessa, and in the south of Ukraine. The U.S. announced that they're going to be providing Ukraine with switchblade. Uh, yes. Lethal kamikaze drones, and the United Kingdom announced harpoons. Have they arrived yet? And what can you tell us about this? Uh, I will not uh, discuss with you any details about the specific, but it, it, it's not good to discuss it publicly. But those will be very helpful? We'll see. Yesterday, Foreign Minister Kleba said that the battle for Donbass would be like the Second World War. Can you describe what it means? It means that we have uh, our Joint Force Operation team there, and uh, they want to, um, to clear them from the land. But we will we're fighting, so that it means that it will be very bloody, bloody, bloody activity. Hmm. And foreign intelligence has said that the attack in Donbass, the offensive, the Russian offensive, could start in four days, five days. But with the attack in Kramatorsk today, a little bit loudly. Because with the attack in Kramatorsk today, do you believe that the offensive in Donbass has already started? Yeah, they continue their program. Hmm. They will ruin all civilian facilities. They will kill civilian people, like they did it in Kramatorsk right right now okay one last question what has been the size of ukrainian military losses to date we hear a lot about civilians but what about military losses uh i cannot say you at this moment sorry okay so finish i have to to, to rush if i can ask one more question about the peace talks uh, do you have any faith that they will be going forward in the near term you mean negotiation negotiation uh as i know it's on a pause on this moment they're thinking why do you think the Russians are, are, are not ready for peace agreement now? Because they want to have some kind of victory. They are wa waiting for the uh, May. They want to organize or arrange some kind of 9th of May parade, as usually. That's why they need a small kind of victory. It could be Donbass, it could be Mariupol. doesn't matter for them. It's symbolic for, for, for Kremlin. That's why they will try to continue. And if you get the weaponry that you're asking, will Ukraine win this war? Sure. And does victory mean... Uh, it will be Ukrainian to, victory. Does that mean returning to the positions held on February 24th? Or uh, could a peace agreement or a victory mean returning Donbass and Crimea? It's the details which we'll be discussing on the table with our partners. I mean, UK, United States of America and Turkish side also. And, and we will see it. 
in a table, not alone, with our partners. And you've been partaking in the peace negotiations. Do you believe that Russia will agree to peace negotiations? Uh, me personally, I don't believe Russians. I know them very well. I talked with them two years in Minsk process and Normandy process. I was a member of delegation from the Ukrainian side. So on this moment, I don't believe them. That's why we have to continue our job and finish. That's why asking your people to help us also. And what will happen in Donbass if we don't get the long distance weapons? You see this atrocity? You will see it in Donbass also. You will see it in Mariupol, you will see it in Kramatorsk, in Kharkiv, Chernihiv, Sumy. You will see it in everywhere. If you will postpone it or procrastinate it, unfortunately we can see it in, in, in other European countries. It's true, it's not my forecasting. And will the Ukrainian military be able to defend Donbass without long-distance weapons? If you will help us, we are ready to do it. Thanks for